Hey guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing my reaction series to Girls Next Door. We are on season four, episode 11. It's my party and I'll die if I want to. So if you hit the like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And let's get started with the episode. Okay, so this episode is, I think the second of Bridget's birthdays that we're seeing on the show. The first one was in season one. We saw her first murder mystery birthday party and this is maybe the third time we've kind of come full circle on this show. Like the first time maybe being the 4th of July party, the second time being Midsummer's, and now you're seeing another like repeat annual event, which is very like true to life at the mansion because they were very big on traditions there. So this would have been her birthday in 2007 and we're starting off with the cold open in Bridget's room. She's trying on like a 1920s dress and she's getting ready to have like a hair and makeup workshop from her friend who's really into like retro everything retro hair makeup clothes all the things and i didn't go to it because i was so sick that day and it's weird when i think about like being sick with like colds or flu because i never get sick anymore like i'll have allergy issues or like sometimes my stomach will be upset but i never get like a flu or a cold anymore do I sound pick me when I'm saying that? I never get sick, guys. It's so weird. I just never get sick. I don't know what it is. I'm such a weirdo. No, I don't know what it is. Back in my 20s, I used to get sick like every year. But now when I think about that, it just seems kind of foreign to me, like getting a flu or a cold. So then Kendra and Bridget go show Hef their red lipstick, which everybody knows he hates. <laughs> like they even say it on the show. So then they show Bridget meeting up with Rich Carell and the guy from the Scare Factory to set up her Halloween party. We love Rich Carell. He did Hef's Haunted Houses. And he had these hats made one year. They were black baseball caps and an orange, they said Playboy Halloween with an orange bunny. And I love those hats so much and I can't find mine. And I know I would have never thrown that hat away. So whoever stole my box of clothes, I can't find it out of my storage. I hope you're enjoying it. So Bridget's pointing out this organ that they had in the mansion living room and it was behind like this um, wooden panel. It was kind of set into the walls and it was original to the house. It was put there in the twenties. And I really wanted to do a movie night where Hef played like the Phantom of the Opera movie, but the original silent one from the twenties and have like an accompanist an accompanist and it, why is that word not coming out right you know what i mean somebody come play the piano and the organ to do the music they would have done in the theaters back in the day and the organ was always broken so they got it fixed and they finally ended up doing it on a halloween night movie screening but it was the halloween like right after i moved out so i missed it so what I loved about this murder mystery party was they worked in the story of Mrs. Letts. Mrs. Letts was this legend um, that was started at the mansion about the original owner's wife supposedly throwing herself off the balcony onto the cold marble floor and dying. And then she haunted the house, which isn't a true story. That was a story that Hef's girlfriend in the 80s made up, but still a good story. So they worked that in with the whole murder mystery thing. So you kind of got to see that story come to life, which I thought was really cool. And then this is another episode where Barbie Benton comes. And when I'm talking about it in the interview, I'm kind of like laughing in the interview because it's just so funny. Like I felt like our producer was like in love with Barbie and would like invite her back for everything. And if we were doing something that was kind of a repeat of something you'd seen before, um, like for example, like Playmate of the Year, like we'd already had a sleepover for the playmate of the year the year before. So it's like that was kind of his way of making it different. It was like invite Barbie. Barbie is such a good sport though. So Bridget, Kendra, and Barbie all go to this strip tease class. And the teacher was really good. I used to go to his classes sometimes. I think, I think they went to this first and then I ended up going to his actual classes. And he was so much fun. Like I'm not the type to usually go to like a workout class. Like I don't really like it. But he was so fun. And he'd always play Britney Spears, which I loved, Break the Ice. That's my favorite Britney Spears song. So Jeff was his name. He was like the most fun teacher and he would just do the class in his underwear. It was so funny. And then there's like the funniest shot of like a guy in the other room staring in at the class, like a total creeper. And who knows, maybe it was out of context, but it's still funny. Pole dancing was such a trend back then. Like that was the edgy new workout. <laughs> 
And another example, I mean, this is kind of funny to watch, but it's another example of how like just doing an activity was a thing worth filming back then. And then Mary's talking about how she got Bridget a skeleton doll dressed up as Mrs. Letts, which is such a cute idea. So then I have a scene with Barbie. I come out to meet her in the guest house and I'm asking her about what she's wearing and everything. And she's showing me her outfit. So you get to see a little bit of like what the guest house looked like when it was, you know, done up, painted. By the way, I think the guest house is demolished now. I think the new owners who have the house, they demolished, because there was the guest house, which is a separate building from the mansion, and then attached to it, uh, and then attached to it was a bird aviary, and the aviary got taken out, I almost want to say before Hef died, I feel like that was taken out. And then um, the guest house got totally demolished, I think. So Barbie brought some like actual authentic 20s clothes, which is cool. And then I'm doing an interview about that scene and I say, it's nice to hang out with our just us because when we're hanging out together in a larger setting, everyone expects us to hate each other, AKA the show. And Barbie's daughter, Ariana came to the party and she was super nice, super sweet. She took me snowboarding later when we went to go visit Barbie's house in Aspen. But I almost wonder, like, I bet the people on the show are thinking, oh my God, Barbie's daughter, it's gonna be like a young Barbie. We should have her cut. I, like, I bet they were thinking it was gonna be like a different thing than it was. I bet they were gonna try, they were hoping it would be like a sexualized situation, but it wasn't. Barbie's just so good in her interviews. Like, she's being real, but she's like giving them what they want. You know what I mean? Bridget's mom is wearing a red flapper dress. She looks so cute. They show this one stairway. It's like a shot down a stairway when they're setting up for the party. And it's this super narrow spiral staircase. And I'm trying to remember where that was. It looks very creepy because it's very like old fashioned, tiny, like tight spaces. I wonder if they're keeping any of that with like all the remodeling they're doing with the house. Like I wonder if they kept, I'm sure they kept some original stuff like the woodwork, but I wonder if they like kept any like those old like passageways and you know, creepy staircases. There's no trafficking tunnels, guys. I feel like the season four episodes were during a really nice time at the mansion, like probably the best time that I was there because I was working at the studio. I was getting along with Hef really well. The show was going well. Bridget and Kendra and I were getting along and having so much fun. So sorry if I don't have a ton of tea for this episode, but it will pick back up by season five because season five is a mess all over the place, you know, the continuity's off. I can't wait to get there myself and just clarify. <laughs> but if it gets to the point where I don't really have enough to say for one episode, I'll start clumping the episodes together, like two in one video or something, so we can move it along for you guys. It's so weird how it all happened when I think about season five, how we all kind of met guys around the same time, or at least like got serious with them around the same time and everybody kind of left at the same time. It was just weird, like the synchronicity of it. So they have this amazing shot in this episode of like a spider on a web in front of the fountain. I love that. It's like four seasons in, they're finally starting to get really creative with the camera work. So at this party, you can finally see my, what my hair really looks like without extensions. It's just all my hair in this scene. We have a very meta moment. As the camera pans through the Great Hall, you see our giant girls next door billboard poster hanging in the great hall <laughs> which we loved we loved those billboards like i couldn't believe it when they put those billboards up all over la right before season one came out i just couldn't believe it i remember bridget and kendra and i drove all over town to find all the billboards and take pictures with all the billboards because it was so exciting for us it was the first time any of us had been a part of something like that and I know for Bridget and I too, we had just gone through so much during our first three years at the mansion where, you know, we dealt with so much drama and so much backbiting and it just felt like a reward for like sticking through all that. And, you know, we loved the pictures they used and like the ads, especially for that first season, they just did a really great job with like the marketing and the ads and stuff. And we were just so excited. But when I reminisce, I always remind myself of that audio that's popular on TikTok where I think it's Mia Farrow and she's talking about it was the late 60s and everybody was just so happy and we were all just so excited. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? So during this time, Kendra was doing a contest show called Celebrity Rap Superstar on MTV. And they have a scene of her in her trailer for that show, getting ready to come to the murder mystery party. Cause she was doing that right after. And it just shows a sign of like the logo for the show. And she's like, celebrity rep superstar has been taking up a lot of my time. And that's kind of all they say about it. And it's just kind of weird for the viewer because the viewer, I mean, maybe if you're like paying attention to like pop culture, you would have like seen her on it and known what she was talking about. But like assuming the viewer doesn't know, like this has never been mentioned on the show before. And all of a sudden she's talking about it. Like we know what it is. She's like celebrity rap superstars are taking up a lot of my time. But I think the reason that was done so abruptly is probably because since celebrity rap superstar was on MTV, I think E probably didn't want one of their shows giving a lot of airtime or a lot of explanation to like another cable network show. And I think that's what happened later too when Bridget got the job for Bridget's Sexiest Beaches. It's kind of like all of a sudden, boom, Bridget's hosting a show, but they don't really explain what it is on Girls Next Door. And I think it's because that was on Travel Channel and E was probably like, stop talking about it. At the murder mystery party, it looks like I'm drinking a skinny bitch, which was Diet Coke and vodka. I would later switch to water and vodka. Now I'm just water. Oh my God, there's the dumbest scene where they have like Hef and Barbie talking and then I'm eating like beef on a stick or something. And I'm just like looking forward, but it, the way they cut it, it makes it look like I'm dogging Hef and Barbie, which I'm totally not. I remember the food for the murder mystery party was so good. It was like a Chinese food menu that they made. It was so good. It's really fun because they put like ghosts in the mirrors in the great hall and stuff. I always thought it would be super fun to do like a Harry Potter Yule ball in the Great Hall. Like if you could somehow cover like the wood paneling with like some kind of like a foil to make it look silvery and then like project snow up onto the travertine on the second story level, it would look like the Yule ball. And I really wanted to do that, but never got around to it. Kendra's hair looks really cute at this party. It's like kind of straightened but there's like little crimps in it. It's really cute. My favorite interview, I think, I think I named a favorite interview, confessional interview of mine a few back, but my favorite is in this one. Like I just look, my skin looks amazing. I have this pink top on. My wig looks really good. Shout out to the wig. And then it's so funny when Kendra's in the library, she found finds an Easter egg, a literal Easter egg, because for Easter, they would hide eggs all over the property and they were eggs where if you've seen our Easter episode, you know where the insides would be blown out. So they were just hollow and you would find Easter eggs all over the property all year long because there were so many. Sometimes I get really sad when I watch these because I see certain scenes and I like remember the camaraderie we had, whether it was between the three of us girls or like other playmates or like Bridget's sister or just whoever we were hanging out with. And I look at it and yeah, I remember like some fun times, but I look at things like this and I'm like, this should have been so fun. And I'm sure it was for other people, but it was just so not fun for me because of the way I was made to feel and the way that I was kind of like never really, I was always kind of like stepped on when I was having too much fun, but it sucks because I'm looking at stuff like this and I'm like, this should have been so much fun. I mean, this was a fun day. It's not like I didn't have fun, but I look at it now and I see what it could have been and how much more fun it could have been. You know what I mean? Like, I wish I could go back and just like tell myself, you're not gonna end up here. Like everything's gonna turn out great. You're gonna get whatever you want. Just, you know, it's gonna take some hard work, but whatever, but just have fun while you're here and don't even listen to what anybody over here is saying. Like, there still would have been people trying to make me not have fun, but I would have hopefully had a better time. And in this episode, you see me go into the wine cellar, which was hidden behind a wood panel door and you had to press the secret button to open the door. And this is the first time they ever showed it on TV because for years before the show started, I used to give tours of the mansion when they needed someone to give a tour. And when I would give it to television crews, I was always told I couldn't show them the wine cellar. And they never really told me why. They just said it was like a security reason. I don't know if they used it as a panic room or what, but yeah. The pictures they made of our characters for the murder mystery thing were really cute. Like they show Kendra's Miss Hercules one, it's really cute. 
I genuinely think with some of these murder mystery parties, they make it so nobody solves it on purpose. So it's always like this big reveal at the end. And then they have the three of us all kind of reveal ourselves as the killer at the end, which I didn't even remember being one of the killers. The cake at this party was super cute. And the icing on the cake at the end when they show the mansion at night, they have like a ghost stroll by, which is very cute. So best and worst of that episode, I think, um, I liked a lot of things. I like seeing the whole Mrs. Let's story acted out. I think it's kind of fun to have like that little piece of mansion lore like worked into the show. And I just love all the little like ghost special effects and stuff like that. And I love my confessional interview in this episode. I think the worst part, like there wasn't really anything bad about the episode. I think the worst part is just me watching it and realizing like, ugh, it's such a shame, like this should have been more fun. Like if there wasn't like all the drama and the games and the pitting people against each other, I just would have felt so much more free to have more fun and not be constantly like looking over my shoulder or like wondering if I'm doing everything right because I don't want to be criticized. So that's that. But overall, I really liked the episode. Sorry I didn't have a ton of behind the scenes tea for this one. Like I said, this is during like a pretty good time um, during my time at the mansion, but tea will happen. Trust me, it will. There's more drama coming. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.